This is my first attempt to see if I can shrink all my video cameras into just this iPhone 17 Pro. I shot a one minute clip in 4K ProRes RAW to see if this latest iPhone could do as well or better than my Lumix S9 and DJI Osmo Pocket 3. Let me know your thoughts after this video. Once I heard about the camera improvements on the 17 Pro, I knew I had to upgrade from my 14 Pro. My goal is to produce the highest quality video using the smallest and lightest camera setup as possible. So when I travel, I want to see if I can shoot all my video with just this iPhone, since I'll have it with me anyway. The 17 Pro is now able to film in 4K ProRes RAW OpenGate with Apple Log 2. This all gives it a higher video quality uh, that's also more amenable to color grading and exposure control. The big downside, which I'll go into later, is that going into ProRes RAW mode, this disables the iPhone stabilization and it produces massive file sizes that are difficult to manage. To use ProRes RAW, you need to have a separate camera app that supports this, such as Blackmagic or Final Cut Camera. In the camera settings, ProRes RAW is the second highest quality. ProRes RAW HQ is above that, but that produces even more massive file sizes, so I didn't want to risk it. Uh, below that is ProRes 422 HQ and 422. To use ProRes RAW, you also need an external SSD, something to do with the patents held by RED Camera and Nikon. Apple is not allowed to enable internal recording. I have this magnetic one terabyte SSD from Orico. It is annoying to carry around something extra, but the file sizes are very large and I only have 256 gigabytes internal storage on my iPhone. As far as video quality, I'm very satisfied with this. You may not see it on YouTube compression, but the image quality on my laptop is very crisp and clear and not overly sharp uh, like it would be if it came straight out of the iPhone camera. And the colors came out fairly true to life, even though I'm not that great at color grading. If it just came down to image quality, this would be the clear winner. But as I mentioned, there are two major downsides that will keep me from using ProRes RAW. Using ProRes RAW turns off the iPhone stabilization, so using a tripod is a must. I tried doing some handheld video, but the video was so shaky I couldn't use any of that footage. I used a lightweight tripod, and even on this tripod, you can still see some jitteriness in this opening scene. But downgrading the quality down to ProRes 422 enables the iPhone stabilization, so I was able to shoot this video handheld using ProRes 422. So the iPhone stabilization, when it's turned on, does a pretty decent job. And I shot this also on ProRes 422, uh, walking along handheld. The bigger issue with ProRes RAW was the massive file sizes. 
I think to come up with just that one and a half minute clip, all the raw footage took up about 200 gigabytes of space on the SSD uh, before I trimmed it down. The final file size on that one and a half minute video was 10 gigabytes. And the workflow to edit down that video was frustrating. I couldn't figure out how to edit the video totally from the SSD. So I had to keep importing the files onto my laptop and I didn't have enough space even though I had over 500 gigabytes of free space on my laptop. So I had to go into the SSD and trim down those clips and then transfer those files onto my laptop. I was hoping to edit the video just on my iPad, but that would be impossible just because of how large these files are. And going back to look at the video of ProRes 422, the image quality on this is actually almost as good as ProRes RAW. The image quality is actually very similar, and I think it would be difficult to tell on YouTube whether it was ProRes RAW or ProRes 422. And I can use stabilization with 422, and the file sizes are much more manageable. I think this would be the most quality I would need, so I think I'll stick with 422 and maybe even try downgrading to HEVC. So even though the ProRes RAW didn't turn out as I expected, I'm still happy with the 17 Pro. It has great battery life and it seems fast and responsive. And there are other camera improvements that I'll have to look into.